Hello and welcome to this field tutorial. I'm Renaud from More Mountains, and today we're going to have a look at screen shakes and how we can use them to improve the feel of our game. So to do that, we're going to have a look at this field toaster demo scene, which got introduced in field 3.5. And from there, we're going to look at the different types of screen shakes, how you can establish a language and a scale for your screen shakes in your game. And then we're going to take a more hands-on approach showcasing how you can set up a bunch of different shakes and that should get you started. So this field toaster demo scene, by the way, I'm in a fresh installed field right now. Um, this scene is very simple. It has a list of buttons. Each button is doing more or less the same thing. It's, by, it's bound to a feedback that does this. It makes the toaster pop and that little dude here goes uh, jumping. And then each of them is playing that feedback plus each of them is also doing uh, playing another feedback, which has usually a simple shake on it. So for example, that's no shake, but this one is no shake plus a basic shake. This one adds a wiggle nose shake, a cinemation impulse shake, and so on and so on. So you can find all feedbacks right here. And this is the, the base one. Um, so all of these things are doing uh, popping the bread and so on. And all these buttons are playing that, but they're also playing, uh, in the case of the basic shake, it's doing a simple camera shake like that. So that's, that's the setup of the scene, which means that you can, of course, press the buttons uh, to have fun and discover the different types of shakes. But you can also go here in your hierarchy under feedbacks, you will find all these game objects that define the different players. And you can, of course, also play these feedbacks from the inspector like, like so. So here we have a camera zoom. And what's important to understand is that this demo is showcasing the different, let's say, big types of camera shakes. But um, you can also go into these, click the values, uh, for example, I don't know, 40 here, and you get a different result every time. So to create a shake, you're going to want to maybe experiment with that. Play with the values, find something that you like. Another thing that's important is that this scene is presenting all types of shakes without judgment, right? So all of these exist. Um, they are not good or bad. They are situational. Uh, if you want to give some perspective to the player in, let's say, a top-down game and you want to move the camera away, then maybe a Z position shake makes sense. Uh, if you abuse them, your game is going to be bad. If you use them sensibly and probably with some form of grading, then you're going to have a good experience and your players are going to like your game. So one thing that I really like to do when I do my own games is defining a scale and defining a language. And what I mean by that is the idea that you're going to have all sorts of events in your game that you want to shake the screen for some reason, define a language. Decide that when you take damage, you're gonna do something, uh, let's say maybe like this, where you also shake the vignette and uh, we have some lens distortion going. on. So that's, that's gonna be, I decide that it's gonna be the language for when my player is taking damage. When I hit successfully an enemy, maybe I wanna do a rotation shake. Maybe not, but um, at least I define my own language. I stick to it after that, and that's going to make something that is consistent and provide a good experience, convey the right idea. Every time the player sees the camera shake in a certain way, they know um, what it means. So that's important. The other thing is the scale. Um, you will want to sort of put your screen shakes, and I would say at a large scale, or your effects on a certain scale. and if something extremely terrible and extremely rare happens uh, on the screen, then you want to shake maybe the screen in a big way when picking a simple item. If it's an, an action you do a lot in your game, maybe don't shake the screen as much. So scale, language, and uh, that toolbox of, of shakes should give you everything you need uh, to do something cool. So let's dive in and see the different types of screen shakes. So the screen shakes in this demo fall into one of six categories. First, we have the camera position shake, typically a cinema machine impulse. So it's moving the camera left, right, up, down, and so on. 
Um, you can also do it with a position shake like this. And in this case, we're moving only on the Z axis locally on the camera. Then we have the rotation shakes. Uh, here's an example of it. So on, in this case, oh, I'm rotating the camera on the X, Z axis, but you could also rotate it on the Y axis, for example, and it looks like the camera is saying no. no. So uh, then we have the field of view shakes. Uh, let's find an example of that. Mm, zoom shake. All right. So this one was playing with it earlier. Um, let's say I create that 15. That's a very bad idea. What was it, 16? Yeah, okay. So 15. All right. So that's, that's a zoom shake. Uh, in this case, we're playing on the field of view of the camera. So it looks like we're zooming in. And of course, uh, we can tweak duration for that. So you know, we can do sort of long zoom, or we could have no stay, but maybe a one second. Okay, so all sorts of different shakes like that. Um, then we have the view shake. And up until now, we've been moving the camera. So either moving its position, moving its rotation, moving uh, it, let's say, forward. And that gives us a Z position shake. Then we've played with the, fo the, the field of view. But we can also actually move other things than the camera. For example, the view shake actually moves the view. And you can see that uh, every time I do that, I, it's it's like I'm moving the screen within the screen. If you look at the top, doing it again, you can see these black bars appearing. It's like I'm actually moving the view. So this in this case, it's done by using a render texture, and we're actually moving the render texture on screen. So it looks like that. What's interesting with that is you're not moving the camera anymore. You're moving the view, so you can convey a different meaning with that. Sort of similar, we have the UI shake. When I press that, you can see that the camera doesn't move at all, but my UI is moving. Um, I demonstrate something similar in the duct demo scene, where if you jump, you have your health bar and like lives and scores moving like so. And then we have uh, post-processing shakes. So technically not moving the camera, but can be used as a screen shake to convey something on screen. Uh, typically, here's a lens distortion shake. Is a chromatic aberration shape and these when used sensibly or in combination with an actual camera shake can also convey a lot of the impact and uh, do a lot of stuff so at the bottom of the list you will find some some combos uh, in this case we're moving the zoom and rotation at once and so you can see that instantly it becomes a bit more interesting than just a simple zoom shake um, you can also do freeze frames along with your camera shakes, and uh, here's one, maybe this one is easier to spot, and you can see that uh, it, it sort of grinds a bit, um, and this, let's say you combine that with maybe um, a sword slash that actually connects with the enemy, that conveys a lot of, of power. Uh, and then yes, uh, vignette and lens distortion combine your post-processing hit at once, and this one, as a bit of everything, heavy combo, I called it. Uh, so we've got vignette, we've got a position shake, camera zoom, chromatic aberration, another position uh, that's for the the virtual camera, actually. And this one was moving the, the actual view. So we've got all of that happening at once. Maybe not uh, on every jump in your game, but that, that conveys, you know, Maybe you've unlocked a new armor, something important in your game. That could be a good use for it. So that's, that's more or less um, all of the types of shakes you can use. Each of these, remember, have a lot of settings. Don't hesitate to explore them, tweak them to your liking. Let's now dive in and see how we can recreate these shakes in a new scene. So I'm going to do just that. I'm going to create a new scene, call it, uh, OK. Let's do it again. Yes, scene. And here we go. In this scene, I'm going to create a cube so that we have something to look at from our camera. And we're good. So um, the first screen shake I want to implement is a Cinemachine camera shake. 
that's the one I would recommend using. Gives you a lot of control over everything. And also, I would also recommend using Cinemachine in your game. Beautiful tool. So let's assume you've already installed it. If you're not sure how to do uh, the installation of Cinemachine in your project, you can look at well, Cinemachine's documentation or fields. And um, once you're set up, you can now go and go uh, game object, Cinemachine, virtual camera, and that's going to add the virtual camera in your scene. The way it works without going too deep into the workings of Cine Machine is that it creates this sort of camera proxy that you can then move. And you can see that by moving my virtual camera, I'm moving the main camera as well, because this one has priority and so on. Um, so to actually be able to shake our camera, we need to add something to our virtual camera. And to do that, we're going to go to um, our Cinemachine virtual camera inspector. And at the bottom, you can see it's, it's got an add extension drop down. Why? Um, because usually you would go through add component. In this case, for this thing, you want to go through this add extension drop down. And at the bottom here, you're going to select Cinemachine impulse listener. So the way this works is it listens for impulse events that can be triggered by pretty much everything. And when it gets an impulse, it's going to react to it by, in our case, uh, shaking. And to trigger our impulse, we're going to go here and create an empty game object in our scene. Uh, we're going to call that my player, let's say. And we're going to go add component MMF player. And here we, we, here we have our, our player. And from there, we can start triggering feedbacks. So um, the one we're going to add is a camera Cinemachine Impulse. And that gives us this little inspector here where we can start tweaking things. So the first thing we want to do is add a raw signal. So depending on your version of Cinemachine, your version of Unity and your version of Peel, uh, this little cog icon may or may not work. If it doesn't work, you can just go here uh, into Packages, Find Cine Machine. Inside Cine Machine, you can find presets, noise, and uh, it's basically the same thing that this little cog drop down is supposed to do. There's a bug right now with Cine Machine, it's not um, opening. Um, just, just go into your presets folder and you can drag uh, anyone you like. I like the 60 shake myself, but pick the one you prefer. So once we've set up our, our raw signal, uh, the next thing to do is to define a velocity. So let's go with, let's say, 555. Five, five, and let's press play because all of this actually we can do at runtime and uh, test. So now I have my Cinemachine Impulse feedback set up. I press play and you can see my uh, camera is shaking when I press play. So congrats, we've done our first camera shake. And from there we can start uh, tweaking things so you can see that there's a bunch of uh, durations here uh, our velocity is going to sort of define the, the amplitude uh, so tweak that to your liking you can have a much longer decay for example if I put it to three seconds you can see that this thing lasts forever uh, but I can make it much shorter as well and now I have something that is extremely short right so tweak these have fun with that uh, experiment and find something that, that you like. Now, in that same scene, let's have a look at how we can set up a camera zoom feedback. So uh, I'm going to exit play mode here. I'm going to remove this feedback from my player. I'm actually also going to remove my Cinemachine virtual camera. We're going to do that on regular camera. We could also do it on the virtual camera, but uh, let's try something different. So on the main camera, the first thing I'm going to do is add a mm camera zoom so this is a shaker if you're not familiar with the concept of shaker um i recommend checking out Phil's documentation there's also a video covering that but basically what it does is just like the impulse listener from cine machine it listens for events it's going to do something uh, when it gets the event we can also test it on its own by pressing play you can see there's a test zoom button here Boom, that's using these default uh, test values right here. And you can see it zooms to camera. So in my um, 
MMF player over there. I'm going to go with camera zoom, press play. And now I can just play my feedback and you can see it's targeting the um, shaker that we put on the camera. And boom, I get to have a zoom. I can play with the field of view to go with something where I zoom out like this. I can, of course, uh, change the duration to have something different and so on and so on. That's how you set up the camera zoom. So we've seen it earlier. There are plenty of ways you can shake your screen, your camera in Teal. I'm not going to show each of them. Uh, you will find more recipes and step by steps in Phil's documentation. I'm going to find. I'm going to show you one last uh, way to do it. So um, on your main camera, you will want to add a um, position shaker. That's a new component. Uh, works for camera shakes. Works for also shaking everything. I'm going to show you an example of that. And if you press play in your editor, then press the start shaking button. You can see that the camera is now shaking. So that's nice. And of course, there's a feedback for that. So uh, I was actually playing with that. I'm going to do it again. Transform position shake. This gives us the same kind of settings where you will see we are able to, well, first of all, shake the camera again. But we can also um, have fun with randomizing the direction. Say I randomize it between uh, my y axis and the uh, x z vector. And now every time I play, it's doing the same thing. But if I click randomize direction on play, every time I play it, I get a slightly different direction. And I can also tweak, of course, the speed, something much faster like this. And I can also have something of a much bigger range where it's moving a lot, or maybe it's moving almost not. And the cool thing with this um, position shaker component is that you can put it on everything. So let's say I create a sphere and I put this sphere in view like this, and I paste the component. Now, when I press play, well, first I can uh, make my sphere shake on its own. But if I trigger feedback, you can see that my camera moves, but my sphere also moves. If I now remove the shaker from the camera and I paste it on the cube, like so, I'm going to make uh, both these objects shake at once like this. And because I random my stuff, I can also get you know very uh, very different results and have a bunch of stuff shaking in my scene. Uh, you'll find examples in the demos. Then while I'm on the subject of showing that, there's uh, two other types of maybe on the cube it's gonna make more sense. There's the um, Scale shaker and there's the rotation shaker, uh, which do exactly what you would expect. Uh, let's see the scale shaker first. So they all work pretty much in the same way, but uh, this is what scale shaker does, and this is what the rotation shaker does. Uh, they are very simple components, uh, easy to use, easy to plug on anything. Uh, come with events so you can trigger them from anywhere. There's no hard coded binding in your scene. Uh, also works nice for camera shakes. So um, yeah. that concludes our screen shakes tutorial. I hope you will have learned something new today and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.